Yay. Good morning, YouTube. Good, Good morning, morning, Tina. Good morning, Lucy. I'm Trader Joe's Tina today. <laughs> PJT. Yeah, I know. It's, I crack myself up changing my name all the time. But first, I want to apologize for those in the Facebook group. Yesterday, I was in such a hurry when I made the bullet point and uh, for <laughs> for today's topic. And forgive me. And I had been up since 3 a.m. that day, so I was tired. So, yes, we are going to do online arbitrage of sorts for Trader Joe's today, but based off the method of walking into a store and taking photographs and researching it on Amazon. Because as you know, Trader Joe's, you can't shop online with them, nor can you see the prices. So sometimes that's something that can be your benefit because not everybody's willing to do that. And it saves you a lot of time being in the store since you can't scan items at Trader Joe's. Exactly. Exactly. And I wanted to bring up before we got too into this, so uh, just a second, I wanted to bring up, I brought up Trader Joe's reselling policy. So let me add that to the stream really quick here. And, you know, I see a lot of people that asks, <laughs> asks, they asks on the boards, uh, you know, is the store reseller friendly? How do you find out? It's really easy. You, you type in the store's name and you type in something like resell policy or third party selling, anything like that. And you usually will be able to find their selling policy fairly quick. If you do this for Kohl's, you're going to find that Kohl's says, has an, a policy online that says we do not sell to resellers. Now, I know some people have, have gotten away with showing the reseller permit at Kohl's, but I can't. And I've talked to the managers there and they say they follow the online policy. Trader Joe's is very similar. It says, uh, for the record, Trader Joe's says its products are best when sold as part of the in-store customer experience. We do not authorize the reselling of our products and cannot stand behind the quality, safety, or value of TJ products sold outside of our store. Which means if you are in there and you are scanning or bringing attention to yourself in any ways, they will eventually put the kibosh on it. And I know one of our friends did get 86 from his local Trader Joe store. And so, you know, how do you get around that? And for me, I go and I get several products and I don't clear the shelves. I get, you know, whatever, 10 or so of of said products, depending on how much is on the shelf. And I'm comfortable when I'm checking out, I just say I'm stocking up, which I am, I'm stocking up for my Amazon store. And you can hit several stores at a time, but do if they see you buying in bulk, I have been told, hey, you can go to the manager and bulk order with the manager. Yeah, you can. That's a great way to get flagged in 86 from the store because they eventually will catch on that you are not going through uh, 82 jars of spice in a month and they're not stupid. So, you know, you just have to learn each store and learn what the rules are and comply. Good morning, Natalia. I, um, I've never bought, you know, mounds and mounds in my shopping cart at Trader Joe's. So I can say I luckily have never been flagged at the store and Trader Joe's is not m one of my main stores. It's just that store that I hit once in a while, but, um, I was selling um, popcorn from Trader Joe's and I did have several bags and the man checking me out when I told him, I said, yeah, I have the hardest time, um, you know, getting enough of these. And he says, oh, he says, we just got a shipment and he goes, we have cases in the back. How many do you want? And I thought, oh, okay. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> and he didn't, oh, he yeah. didn't question it at all. He just said, uh, you know, yeah, this stuff is really popular. <laughs> Well, and things like two cases of chips, you can easily say, I'm having a party. It's my favorite one. You know, that's believable. I do a lot of the everything bagel seasoning. Every time I go in, I grab some because I always make like two bucks a piece off of it. It pays for my gas every time I go to Trader Joe's. By the way, there's a bolo for you at Trader Joe's. I can never stay in stock. As soon as it hits the warehouse, it's sold. And, you know, you can only put so many in your cart and there's only so many on the shelf. So, yeah. you know, if there's 12 on the shelf, I'll take eight, leave four up there or half, you know, maybe six, depending on, on the day and et cetera. But, 
you know, if you're doing Cajun seasoning or something, you can't really justify 25 bottles of Cajun seasoning. You can in Louisiana. Well, maybe in Louisiana you could. When you said 12 on the shelf, I, my brain that's not awake yet heard Elf on the Shelf. Uh, elf on the Shelf. You know what? Elf Speaking of shelf. Elf on the Shelf, are you still sourcing those? Because they did do IP claims a couple years ago, but last year. I don't year, have I any. And when I did have any Elf on the Shelf stuff, I bought it at Walmart after Christmas when it's 75% off. So yeah. this I year I did not. Too, some clothing. Mm -hmm. Which I don't, I don't, I grew up, I didn't have no elf on the shelf and my kids asked me why we don't do it. And I said, cause I just, I don't like it. I never even heard of it. Till it <laughs> no, and now you got to dress the elf up. You got to do all this stuff. And I have a couple friends who are, who are just like consumed by this elf every season. I'm like, you don't have to do it just because it's popular in America. It doesn't mean you have to do it. Anyhow, my rant on the elf for the day. And I see that we now have more people that joined us. And what I led with that, I apologized y'all for, <laughs> for my faux pas of, of putting online arbitrage um, at Trader Joe's when, uh, no, you cannot buy at Trader Joe's online, but we can um, source it. We can uh, not source, but we can research it online, but we need to know the prices. And since you can't buy it online, you can't see pricing, you need to go into the stores and grab pictures. You cannot scan Trader Joe's barcodes in the store because mm -hmm. it's not, they're not a scannable barcode. So everything is image search or manually typing it in search. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be standing around in Trader Joe's or really for me, any store for that matter, um, just standing there. It drives me crazy. I would rather take pictures, come home where I can look it up on my computer. It's a lot easier than go back to the store with my shopping list and grab a bunch of stuff. So oh, exactly. that's what we're going to do today. I went into a Trader Joe's and I took a few pictures. Um, my favorite shelf or my favorite end cap is whenever Trader Joe's has their new seasonal things that come out. So throughout the year, Trader Joe's offers seasonal um, products. And those are usually the really good sellers. And um, I don't lower my price on them because once you can't get them anymore, those prices, uh, you can get the higher price for them. Um, this picture here, I just took this. So you can buy ginger snaps year round, although we traditional think of ginger for Christmas. Um, but these cookies here, these ginger snap cookies, I already knew I had stumbled across a listing on Amazon once for these that in my mind, I thought, you know, Trader Joe's prices are usually around, you know, two or three dollars for these cookies. They ended up being three ninety nine. I had a hunch that these were probably profitable. So that's why I took a picture of these cookies. Now we have somebody on Facebook and because I have my screen being used, I can't see your name. Apologies. But they ask, how do you get ungated in Trader Joe's? And I have to say, it's going to be an auto ungate mm -hmm. with when your account hits particular matrix. So just keep trying, keep going through your applications, keep trying to get ungated and keep trying to get auto ungated on all of your applications. And it's really easy to do. You go to your applications, just go to the ones that are still, you know, still open and I hit uh, control click, which opens it up in another tab. And I just go through and control click all of them. And I always wind up getting a couple that get open. And somebody mentioned in the Facebook group that they had been allowed to sell Trader Joe's. And now all of a sudden they're gated in Trader Joe's. And I, um, I can still t uh, sell Trader Joe's. So I'm curious why that happened to them. Well, and don't forget that you need to be ungated both in grocery and in Trader Joe's. So mm -hmm. there's a category gate and a brand gate. So maybe make sure that you are ungated in that. And a lot of people don't realize when they're first starting out, health and beauty are two different things. And sometimes they get categorized or you think it's in one category and it's, it's not, it's in another category, like a face cream, a face cream could be either be in health or it could be in beauty. And, uh, depending on what it is, you could be seeing that gate because you have a category gate. Tell me if you want me to flip. Did you want me to flip? Oh, yeah, because um, I believe I, yes. So I um, found this three pack of these Trader Joe ginger snaps and you can see they sell all year round. 
um, you can see that the sellers stay about the same going in and out of stock. And the best part is, is the pricing. The pricing looks like it stays very steady, although it does look like last year it took a dip in July for whatever reason. Now, hold on. I may have caught a, caught a mistake here. They're $3.99, so a three-pack would be $12. Oh, because, you know, again, I did that yesterday with very little sleep. <laughs> That's okay. I had slept so badly. I don't even know how many hours of sleep I got. It wasn't many. And then I was up at 3 a.m. yesterday. So yesterday I was not on all cylinders. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk a minute because this, while maybe the profits are not as amazing, these types of bundles, there's a lot of good things going on here that I look for, especially in Trader Joe's. One, it's a multi-pack. Two, it's a category or an item that's going to be replenishable. People are going to eat their ginger snaps. They're going to want more. So I love those types of replens that are commodities and, and keep going. Three, the Keepagraph has everything going for it. It's got a steady price and it's got lots of green squigglies. So that means it it sells. You're going to hit the warehouse and it's going to go. So if you're kind of debating between, you know, coming down to $27.99, you know how it says right here, $27.99 or $27.99. It actually made $3.58 since I, I plugged in the wrong uh, dollar amount in there. So it's still profitable, oh, yeah. um, the listing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm saying you can hold out the extra dollar or two because it will sell at that price. Don't don't sit there and bottom drop this one. Don't don't price. Well, and you see that it goes up to 30. Yeah. Um, at times, too. Yep. Uh, so it's just got a lot of good things going on. And then my threshold for grocery is under 50,000 in rank and it's hitting that as well. Yeah. It is a bit heavy, but that's OK. Yeah, and there were other listings on Amazon for these Trader Joe's um, ginger snaps. So mm -hmm. that's the thing, is when you take a picture of the shelf at Trader Joe's and you find this one item, sometimes you can find multiple profitable listings. That Keepa looks like this on all of them. And you now can take one item and have and maybe spread it across three different listings. There might be a single one, there might be a double pack one, and they're all profitable. Mm -hmm. And 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 that way you can try them all out. And so it's kind of like you'd get three replans for the price of one with this one item. And this is the kind of thing I will look for when I'm researching things. Is is there other listings, or is there maybe a listing that has? Um, two or three different type of Trader Joe cookies in the tubs. Is there a ginger snap, an animal cracker, and a, a lemon, you know? So um, just open up your creativity of the mind and see what else you can find. Let's talk about <laughs> packing really quick, because would you bubble wrap this at all, or would you just stick it in a poly bag and, and go? Well, these little tubs are quite sturdy and really it would depend on what kind of cookie ideally i would think on something that could possibly crumble like this you may want to put it in a box admittedly i have sent in similar cookies in these tubs during q4 mm -hmm. and sold them without any complaints of them being broken because mm -hmm. i feel like amazon does box them um but it's really your comfort level and uh, what you've tried, you know, you might want to test three, like, okay, let me just poly bag these since this is a sturdy tub. And let me see if Amazon just throws it in a box and the customer is, is ticked off. So you maybe only have one bad, bad uh, review on that um, to determine it, what is or isn't necessary. The other thing I like to do is if, if you're in, this is Scoutify too, if anybody's wondering, this is Scoutify too on the left, this is Keepa on the right. If you click the ASIN, it will bring you to the Amazon page and you can go ahead and scroll down to the comments. And if the comments are like, arrive broken, arrive broken, arrive broken. Yeah. Up your you know, yeah, definitely. So you took some pictures for us. I did. This, this going is the seasonal shelf I was talking about. So this is the stuff that is now arriving at Trader Joe's seasonally. I did go ahead and look up most of these items ahead of time, just so I was a little bit more prepared to talk about them. Mm -hmm. And these 
strawberry lemonade Jojo cookies. Um, I didn't see them on Amazon. So my guess, and I don't recall these from last year, but last mm -hmm. year, I don't think I went into Trader Joe's at this time of the year. I, I just think I, you know, bypassed Trader Joe's altogether last summer. So this flavor must be new this year is my guess. I don't know. I, you know, others of you who go in here regularly may know. Um, but I, the reason why I feel it's new is because I could not find an Amazon listing for this a couple days ago. Um, but there will be one. Somebody is going to make a listing for these cookies because oh, the okay. Trader JoJo's cookies, um, I have sold them and, you know, I've done well with the JoJo cookies. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did really well this spring with the Valentine's Day. They had Valentine's Day cookies and they had Valentine's Day gummies. They, they were, you know, like instead of gummy worms, it was gummies X's and O's. Mm -hmm. And I think I bought 15 or something, maybe 20 in it. That was a little high for me to do a test buy. Usually I do three or four, but it was the end of the season, you know, and I, it, it's not going to be back. It was towards the end of Valentine's day. Did phenomenally well with them. Now the item that had immediately caught my eye. And again, I just go on hunches of what um, I think might be good. Some of it's just based on um, experience. Some of it's based on history, you know, of what I've done. But I don't know. Can you zoom in on it or not? It's on the third shelf down on the far, um, uh, my right. It, it's the little green jars. Can, can we zoom in on that or not? No, not really. Okay. Not the way I set it up. I didn't know you were going to be needing mm -hmm. zoom. Well, it's okay. I just don't know how, how well it, everybody can see it or not. But what it was right. is um, it's pickle seasoning. It's pickled flavored seasoning. And um, don't worry about it, Luce. And Well, I got to bring up the other. Oh, okay. So this pickled flavor seasoning and why one of the things I love buying in Trader Joe's for us personally is they have pickled flavored popcorn that comes out every year. I've even sold it on Amazon. It sells really well um, and it is just so delicious. Here we go. So I found a listing for it. I, my gut told me that this would exist on Amazon and this was the only listing that I could find. And um What was it? I think it cost three dollars. Is that I believe that you don't have to go back, but I believe that's what the price was on there. Two ninety nine. Yeah. Two forty nine. And, yeah. And so of course this is brand new. So if you looked at Keepa, you're going to see that there were some sales. Um, but look, six dollars and forty cents on that. There are currently a lot of sellers um getting on the listing, but it has had some sales at, at on Keepa. But did See, you want me to scroll the keeper? It, look, but it's been on here 12 days. And so, but if you look above, even on the calculator, what does the statistics say on drops down there? I didn't check that when I looked. 73. So, and it says it's been on there 12 days. How is that possible? <laughs> Here's the other thing, though, that can be a plus or a minus. We went from an, a new offer counter of, you know, we've got four people. And now we have over 21 people on this listing. Yes. So and still rocking and rolling, but this is seasonal. So it's like, even if there ends up being a hundred people on this listing um, and, and you send yours in, once they're gone, they're gone. And um, I think because their pickle popcorn is so popular, I, I'm guessing that's why they came out with this blend. Um, what you would put this on, I don't know. Maybe your own popped popcorn at home. But um, I'm all over this. <laughs> their pickle popcorn is the bomb. It, you have to like pickles. But I, we love it. I could eat a whole bag of that stuff. What I also like is if you scroll down here, it says other things brought you know, that people are going to be buying from Trader Joe's. And then down here, sometimes you get other ideas, kernels, dill pickles, seasoning. I bet you this is at a store for a pretty good price. I bet you it's two, three bucks at a store and it's going for $9. And then let me see if there's anything else noteworthy on this page. No customer reviews yet. You don't really need customer reviews and things like that for these types of items. Because people know Trader Joe's, they know the pickle seasoning, they're out looking exactly for that. Now, would you bubble wrap this if it was glass? 
If it was glass, absolutely I would. Okay. So now this one is not, not as fabulous, but it is going to be small and light. That's why I like Rev Seller. You could just click that small and light. And if you could get this for a dollar, it'd be a good see, good price, but not. Yeah, not I'm sure it's going to be two ninety nine, like the uh, yeah the pickle one. Yep. Here's everything bagel. So you can see how, and then we've got the lime. So you could literally go down the spice trail for quite a while. I know the everything but bagel is, isn't it $2.99 or is it $1.99? I don't know. And I, I actually considered going to take a picture of the spice shelf for this video that I thought, oh gosh, we'll be looking up spices all day long. And so that, <laughs> that's why I chose the seasonal because I know that uh, the seasonal stuff is always pretty hot. I know there's a, there's a two pack, there's a multi-pack. So if you want to go down the spice, spice trail, look up this everything bagel one and find either a two pack, a three pack. I think there's a six pack. There's quite a few. There's also listings that take, you know, their top two flavors and put it together as a multi-pack. So there's a lot of uh, trails you could go down on, on spices. And then on this shelf, as I as I was researching the items on there, um, I saw that you had taken the, the the photo that had cracked me up because it was a, a barbecue sauce. No, it was a seasoned flavored almonds um, are on, I believe, the bottom shelf of this photo, which you cannot see. Um, and Wait, is that right there? Yes. Excuse yes. Me. There we go. Buffalo. Yes. Yeah, so these were a buffalo uh, seasoned almond, and they have a really great nuts section at Trader Joe's. And so I decided to to research these to see if there was a listing, and I came across the listing for this two pack. <laughs> it made me literally laugh out loud because whoever created this listing took this photo of these almonds in their Trader Joe's shopping cart at the store and just put that right up on Amazon. <laughs> and and it passed. And people, if you're going to do a listing, like, come on, do it a little bit better. I don't know. I, something about me loves it at the same time. So funny. Anyway, this uh, bundle cost $6. Those were two ninety nine uh, a bag. I was looking. Hold on. I think it was two ninety nine because I said yeah. it out loud. Or was it three? I, I have my three ninety nine. Okay, three ninety. So this is eight dollars. Um. So we got to plug in eight dollars. But this one was a profitable listing on. Um, on that seasonal shelf. Now these may stick around and they may not, you know, maybe uh, with the almonds, but it was on their seasonal. So um, generally, like I said, those go out of season and then you, you can't get them anymore. But that looked like a pretty good profitable listing. The rank is not very high for food. Um, it, it's in the top 4%, but I believe it's also a newer listing too, because this is a newer item. The other thing that I'll point out here, maybe get your take on, is the brand is called Trader Joe's 2, not Trader Joe's, which is how people get around making listings for brands that are kind of like the brand, but not specifically the brand. They make up stuff, which I don't know if Amazon's going to clean this up or let it let it go, but the brand Trader Joe's 2. I'm curious. Do you care if we click, click on it? No. Let's see what Trader Joe's two. Well, is that has. and look, it looks like they're creating two packs, and that's where you get Trader Joe's two from. <laughs> Usually, Amazon, I've not seen them pull these kind of listings with mm -hmm. Trader Joe's specifically. Um, I feel like it's the Ooh, bigger awesome. brands that are definitely going to get removed. If you were doing this with Nike and calling it Nike two, um, for whatever reason, you know Trader Joe's just being kind of like the mom and pop store, so to speak. These ones just, I've never ran across one that has gotten pulled. I love, I was going to say the sunscreen might be a good bolo, but it will be hazmat. And that's the thing too, is I have looked up some of these things sometimes ahead of time before I went into Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. And then I went into a Trader Joe's to see how much do they cost. But I do spend the majority of my time at home online searching them because it's just easier. It's just easier to see it big on your computer, to see keep on your computer rather than on your phone. 
another thing I will do is I take my phone and I open up when I'm just at home doing uh, research, sometimes even with my my um, my photos that I've taken is I open up the camera feature on Amazon Slowdown and I will say scan. I'm going to scan this body butter listing right now. And it's, you know, it's it's searching and then it pulls up the uh, listings for body butter and there are more than one. So sometimes I do it this way too. I'm trying to slide this back over, but on this page, uh, on my phone, by using the Amazon camera, there's a two pack of the coconut body butter. There is a single of it. Then somebody named, uh, made a bundle with two different scents of body butter. And then somebody did um, a body butter and a salt scrub from Trader Joe's. And then they added in two concave spoons, which when you go in salons um, to keep things sanitary, you'll use a spoon to remove the product, put it on your hand. Mm -hmm. um, so they're gearing that like more of a spa experience. Somebody has uh, the coconut with the pumpkin flavored. I mean, there are several other listings that come up for body butters. And then once you know the price, had I taken the price of the body butter at Trader Joe's, we could now see which of these kind of bundles would be profitable that we may want. I want to say the body butter is either $5.99 or $4.99 a piece. If we did $5.99, you're making four bucks, which is 36%. And this thing is selling like hotcakes, 16,000 in beauty. So it's going to hit the warehouse and, and go. I mean, look at the keep a graph here. It yeah, is right now. There's not very many sellers and that is currently in the store because like I said, I just went there the other day to do photos and I did go buy that shelf and I had thought about taking a picture, but I was like, oh, this stuff is always here. You know, it wasn't like um, they come out also with seasonal scented body butters, you know, mm -hmm. at, at fall, they have the pumpkin body butter. And so I was like, well, the coconut body butter is there all the time. So I, I did look over in that area to see if there was a seasonal scent. So I wish I had taken a photo now so we could know for sure the price on it. Well, it's definitely worth a look-see if yes. you're going into the store. And see, the point of doing all of this is this is for those of you like myself. I don't want to be in the store. I don't want to be in the store on my phone forever I, because I just don't like it. That's just my preference. And this to me is such a huge time saver. And it's not like this is a clearance rack where if I don't scan it and research it right then and there and take it, then it's going to be gone when I go back. This is stuff that's going to be on their shelves. You don't have to panic buy it. You know, you do have time to come home and really do your research. So you can go in there confidently and, and choose, I'm going to get 12 of these, six of these, 10 of these. Um, you can really make an educated decision, have a prepared shopping list. And Trader Joe's is not a big store. It's easy to find the stuff. And you were already there and took the photos anyway. So you should know where you're going back to to get the item. And then you can go in there and you can grab all your stuff in 20 minutes and be out. Yep. Yep. I want to talk just for a second <clears throat> really quick about how we have kept shopping lists over the years. Okay. Because there's, there's so many ways you can do it. Some people make spreadsheets, whether it's Excel or Google Sheets, and, and plug in all the numbers on there and have a running Excel sheet. Totally doable and probably essential if you're going to work with a third-party fulfillment center. Not that you could really do that with Trader Joe's, but for other things. We have used Google Keep and done pictures and lists. I've written down on a notepad what to get. Um, I have pulled inventory labs sales reports and printed out a list of what you know what performed what so that i can go into the store and get the items but my new current favor hi mikey my new current favorite way to keep a list is on my amazon account as i'm going through sourcing here amazon allows you to make wish lists it's kind of like a wedding registry or baby shower registry esque and i just make lists and my list is called trader joe's so when i'm in the store Oh, good. My trash people are here. Track. <laughs> <laughs> when I go into the store, I can just open up my Amazon account, go to my list, go to Trader Joe's, and I can see what the current price is going for right now and what the items are and if I need a two-pack. And then when I get back to the office, I can easily add them to a, a shipment going, going out. 
So that's my new favorite way. But there's a lot of different ways you can make make lists to go in and go shopping. Right, so now that I'm looking at the chat, hi, Natalia. Hi, Mikey. <laughs> Do you need me to go down? Um, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, the, the other items, I did not even look up those pickles because I personally don't want to be bubble wrapping and um, even messing with those kind of glass jars. Now, other people don't mind doing that. I'm just not the one. Um, so <laughs> I didn't even look those up. I also did not look up the decaf Joe coffee. I only just kind of cherry picked what I thought might be good just so we could prepare for this um, video. Um so that is something we could possibly look up and see uh, decaf Joe. Um, do they not normally have decaf Joe? I, I've bought coffee from there, but I I don't understand people who drink decaffeinated coffee anyway. So it's like decaf coffee's never on my radar. I've already look it up real quick? Now I'm drinking tea. I mean, I'm all about the caffeine because I need it. You want me to? Sure. Go ahead and look it up real quick. Since you already have your tab open. Trader Joe's uh, is right down And I there. can't, again, see the Facebook, but to manage by a lot of quantity, you just have to go with what's on their shelf and you usually hit a couple stores up and try to stay under the radar. I don't ever clear the shelf. I'm never mean to customers or be like, get out of my way or whatnot. Right. I, I fill up what I feel is reasonable and I have gone in twice. You know, go in and get some things and then go back in a second time and get some things and check out a different stand. Well, that Trader Joe yeah. decaf was in a green bag. Yeah, I'm, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. So these are the ones I'm more familiar with of, of, on the shelves, those those cans, was those it this cylinder. One? It, was it didn't one, look right? like that. Mm -mm, it was a different one and it was decaf. See how that looks? And I guess Maybe we can go up on it to, to see the bag, but. It was medium roast. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a newer decaf coffee this year and it may not be on Amazon yet, you know, especially when the things are new, like those cookies. Yep. Uh, Mikey says, have we heard of seller amp for OA sourcing? Yeah, we have. And somebody on Facebook also hate standing in stores. I agree. I hate standing in stores. I do. I just, I, and then, you know, and then I don't care. See, there goes a great listing for a three pack of different flavors. And the coffee shelf is a great area to go take a picture of and look up stuff over the years. I've sold coffee on and on from um, Trader Joe's. Yeah. But it always seems, I kid you not, the whole row could be empty. And I decide right now at Trader Joe's, I'm just going to look up coffee. All of a sudden, everyone and their mother needs to be there buying coffee. And then I'm the one in the way. And it's like, I'm the one that looks like a jerk because here I am on my phone. Like, why is this lady standing here texting? And I want to get caught. Then I'm constantly moving so they can get their coffee. And then I get frustrated. And then I put like six different coffees in my cart and try to go find a corner that no one's at so I can just stand there and look up all my coffee. I just hate it. I just don't like doing that. Okay, I had to look this one up because in your picture over here to the left, I don't know what the price is, but it's jalapeno limeade. That sounds <laughs> terrible. Let me drink that. See, I would drink jalapeno limeade with some vodka in it. Uh, oh, yeah, I like all of those um, those crazy kind of drinks. I'm the person that will get the jalapeno martini. I'm the one. It's me. Oh my god. <laughs> You are killing me. <laughs> I don't see it on here. That's another one that would be see, interesting. Because it's new. And so, but these things. Oh, here you go. I'll get this for you for Christmas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I just think it's from all the years being in, in Vegas and, and going to like, I like more the, the bars in the art district and, and they'll just make these interesting drinks where they'll muddle um, you know, jalapeno and cilantro and something. I, I, the, the stranger it is, I want it. Okay. So for everybody <laughs> out there listening, go ahead and type in what your favorite drink is or the weirdest thing you've drunk. Because I am now curious because I have never had a jalapeno margarita. I don't plan on having a jalapeno <laughs> margarita. I like mine straight and regular. Uh -uh. It's not like it tastes like pepper juice. It just has a little kick. 
Okay, so these things I did not look up, but this is next to the coffee. Um, these are all of the teas. And so I thought we could go ahead and do this um, live this morning and, and type in some of these teas. I will tell you that when I was in there taking a photo, that tea at the end, I believe it was a grapefruit tea on the, the top shelf. And okay. my Trader Joe's, I, and I've not seen this at all Trader Joe's, but they have little tiny shopping carts for the kids to push. There, it's an exact replica of the big shopping cart. And there was a little girl with her mother and mm. I'm not very tall. I can barely reach the top shelf at stores, but at Trader Joe's I can. And the little girl says, excuse me, can you get me the, and she pointed up at the tea and I handed it to her and she put it in her little girl's shopping cart. And I just, I just loved every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love looking at these two for when I'm creating listings, mm -hmm. like this is more, this is better to my eyes than this. This is better to my eyes than this. So I always get ideas on when I'm going to be yeah. putting, putting stuff together. So that I think that was grapefruit tea on the top shelf of that photo that I took at the end. I is, is that I can't see. It says red refresh. Okay, red refresh. So let's type in Trader Joe's red refresh and see what we can get. There you go. And thank you, Mikey, for asking. I am still getting settled, but... We're working. Life goes on. Espresso martini and a dirty martino. Martini. Hmm. What's an espresso martini? That that. Coffee, girl. Coffee. Well, I know, but I'm wondering what it yes. is. Yes. All right. We found your refresher. We got a single, single pack of four. Look at the rank difference. Forty-three yeah. versus six hundred and seventeen. So clearly the better one. And then how much was it? It was two forty nine. Yeah, that's not going to be profitable. Maybe, maybe with the small and light, it will be. Let it load. Let it load. It is. You make ninety five cents. Yeah, that's not exciting enough. I no, want excitement. I want like pickle seasoning excitement. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to get it. Was this ginger turmeric one on there? I don't think so, but they're probably yeah. all, you can see they're all about two seventy nine a box, uh -huh. except that matcha green tea powder was seven forty. Oh, that was hanging on the hanging thing. Um, wait a minute. So, all right. Ginger, ginger turmeric. That might be. That one might be profitable because let's say ballpark, just based off my photo of, of, all the teas that they had, they're bar ballpark two dollars a box, right? At a dollar seventy nine, close enough to two two dollars. So we'll ballpark mm -hmm. when we're researching. Oh, is that two seventy nine or one seventy nine? Yeah, two seventy nine. Okay, so they're ballpark three dollars. So we're gonna when we're searching now for any of the tea flavors, even if they're not in your photo because you didn't get the whole shelf or something, you can pretty much guesstimate that they're gonna be around three dollars a box. So if today, even on your own, if you want to search a lot of different Trader Joe tea listings, um, you can assume that they're going to cost about $3 a box and you may find yourself some replens today. I like this variety. I do too. I always love a variety pack. And that's another thing you can do. When you're typing in the search bar, we're going to do Trader Joe's today. You can simply type in Trader Joe's variety pack. Trader Joe's bundle. And sometimes, you know, other listings may surface. And then that way you're not even specifically typing in Trader Joe's tea variety pack. You're just typing in Trader Joe's variety pack. And you can, you can definitely make it a, a longer, a long tail. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, I wish I had bought this. I know I saw the winter wake up tea yes. and I passed it this last year. Yeah, I've bought that this tea before. I did not last last year. I just didn't do any Trader Joe's. I don't know. I just didn't. But I have sold this exact tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I'll just do, you know, kill all of that. Mm -hmm. and, and just, just put, put in Trader Joe's tea. tea. You're going to get sponsored junk up here. Scroll down past the sponsored junk. I saw that winter tea right there too, that candy cane tea. Candy cane. I like the little polar bear. He's pretty cute. Pumpkin spice. 
sashes. Those look fun. Black tea. We got the Moroccan. And some well of this has been around for years at uh, that that candy cane tea. Like I sold that when I first learned how to do um, Trader Joe's. Green Those tea mint. sold by the checkout counter. Yep. I was going to say, what do you think uh, cost of goods on the mints are? Have you ever bought the mints there? Um, I have not, but I'm going to guess $2 a can. That's what I would think. Mikey, I'm using Rev Seller, typing it in there too. That is what uh, what the calculator is. It's my new software for the year, and I absolutely love it. It allows me to quickly price. Here we go. Here's that blood blood orange I've talked about a couple of times. Mm -hmm. What did we say? Two seventy nine. Yes, I was calling it three dollars. Five fifty eight. So, yeah, not as great. Exciting. No, but if you can get it, if it was on sale for less, that could be could be good. Mm -hmm. Did you have a? Did we want to move on from teas or go to the second shelf? Yeah, we'll move on from this picture. I think everyone gets the idea of that one. And then oh. these were just some more teas. Mm -hmm. Rock and mint. We saw that one. Mm -hmm. There was. Uh, I don't remember what the rank was on the Moroccan mint. And there was a two pack too. So how much was the Moroccan mint? 279. <laughs> so yeah, this one, they probably got it when it was a lower price. Everybody seems to have increased their prices. I noticed that when buying some things yesterday. Yeah. Was, Everything uh, has gone up in the stores. It, some of my items that used to be my replens mm -hmm. are now fell off the radar when I went through at the end of month and cleaned up my account of items mm -hmm. I needed to purchase again because of the pricing going up. They weren't worth it anymore. Um, one of my replens used to cost me 11 and I think I used to make $6 on it. Now with the price increase, my profit would be $2 and it's just not worth it to me. And, you know, and that's going to be for all of us. So either the prices are going to have to go up on Amazon once, you know, sellers are now replenishing them. So I didn't delete some of my replens from my account because I'm trying to wait it out to see if the price is going to catch up on Amazon. Wow, this green tea is only three bucks. My kids love green tea. Forty-eight, three dollars. Okay. Yeah. That, one. that one's not a super high rank, and it doesn't have a lot of ratings. It may be somewhat newer of a listing. Maybe we'll check down below. It is small and light, mm -hmm. so it is good. And then track my order, Mikey. I don't know where you're seeing that. Oh, you well, have track. It's because you're logged out of your account. Yeah. So you have, yeah. I think it's just Tractor. I don't really use that anymore now that I have Keepa, but uh, Tractor, Camel, Camel, Camel. What's the other one? There's another one that I run. Um, let's see here. So it looks like a couple sell every month. See, and this is why I, I wouldn't even mess with this one. To me, it doesn't sell fast enough. But that's just me. I know some people do, do buy like two to go on these type of listings. Well, you could do two or three. I, I think I think you could sell three a month if you're filling your cart up. Is it something that's going to make it oodles of money? No. Yeah. But if you're, you know, just finding things or testing things. And I will tell you, when Lucy and I have gone out sourcing together, she's jumped on listings that are like this because we're both looking together. I'm like, eh. It's, and, and she'll buy them and she'll go, oh, yeah, I ended up selling like 12 of those. So, you know, like I told you, Lucy is, you know, a little bit more uh, of a risk taker than me. And, and it pans out for her a lot of times. Because well, I'm looking at it and I'm going, it's three bucks. Okay. It's it's three bucks and you have the potential to double your money, three bucks. Okay. If I've got $200 worth of stuff in my cart, three bucks is not like. Right. It's not going to break the bank. It's, not, it, it's something to test out and see. But that's why I love that we our approaches are so different. I you know, because um, I think it's helped both of us out. Yeah, it is this one, Mikey. It is DS Amazon Quick View, and that's what's showing this section right here, where you get to see the rank um, 
and you can copy the ASIN really quick. And, and that's a free, that one's that. free. I, I'm pretty sure that one's a free tool. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, I guess there's an extended. I don't know. I, I probably did the free version if I could. If not, it was not very expensive. Okay, so we've looked at green tea. What is Sencha? S-E-N-C-H-A. What kind of, of tea is Sencha? I don't know. I have no idea. I've never heard of it. I'm not a tea connoisseur. Is this, is this? That looks like that's it. Yep. yep. Okay, we have a match. Two pack of Sencha tea, Japanese green tea. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's probably very, um, we have a lot in that. Uh, we have a lot of Asian stores in my area. 558. I'd probably have that one. You make two bucks off of that one. It is a two pack. So that's pretty easy peasy. That's not so that bad. One. I mean, the ROI is over 30%. The, the rank is yeah, a little on the high. Right. Is it new? No, it's not a new listing either. No. Seven per month. That's another one. Like you go up to the aisle, I'd get probably, you know, three sets of the green, three sets of the Sencha. Try it out. You see I what happens. Have either one of them. <laughs> but I would have head over to check out those, those green tea mints. I am going to. Uh, next week when I go by Trader Joe's, I am going to see if I can find those because I'm curious about them now. That and see what you can do is when you've researched like this at home and you already have your shopping list that you're going to go in for, now go ahead when you saw some other things like the green tea mints and, and go check them out. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We're going to re reverse for source in a second here. Yep. Um, I don't care for either of these two pictures. Let's see what the rank's going to load as. 60,000, good. 368, stay away. You get two. This is a two pack. So even though the picture is absolute garbage, there's a 350, 350, $7. So it's not going to be anything. And then we've got well rested. That's 249. We'll look at real quick at well rested. And what Lucy and I are doing right now is exactly what I do. I do exactly what she's doing, looking it up. And um, then once I'm done researching the the couple of pictures I took, because as you see, it can take, you know, 30, 40 minutes just to look up a couple of shelves. But today I will say I would confidently buy that pickle seasoning. Um, there was, I think, two other things I would have bought. So by going in Trader Joe's in less than five minutes and taking a couple of pictures, coming home in about, because we wouldn't be talking when you're searching it on your own. So realistically, I maybe would have spent 30 minutes doing this and I would have easily now walked away with at least three replens. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And, and I feel like that is faster than standing in the store doing it on your phone. And it's like, I like to be time efficient. I just do. And I don't even have little kids anymore. But so many sellers do have a family and young kids. And, you know, it's like I would rather be at home with my kids screaming and running around than them yanking on my leg and, you know, being distracted and bored in the store. Exactly, exactly. I do a lot of this research. One, my I have my VA do a lot of this type of research, especially for just online online particular stores. And then uh, I do this when I'm sitting watching TV at night. Yes. Just looking things up. And so since you brought up a VA, that reminds me tomorrow, I am going to be interviewing my VA live in our group. And um, it is something you guys do not want to miss out on. I promise you, you're going to want to join in for um, what she's going to offer just our group. Um, it'll be worth it. And for those that think you can't afford a VA, um, you really can afford um, this lady's VA services. Um, she has a team of VAs, so it's not her uh specifically that you're dealing with, but um, just tune in tomorrow. So Tina did pictures, which is always amazing. And you can get the price right then and there. And you kind of like, you've got to be a, a little, I don't want to say it. You can't just be in there acting like you're doing a photo shoot. Just be a little discreet about your picture taking. 
And uh, I like to go and just type in. I stand in front of the shelf like this, like you're doing Trader Joe's selfies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to go up here and just type in Trader Joe's and then a category. Chips, seasoning, salsa, mm -hmm. nuts, cake, you know, something like that. And, and uh, you know, going along here, these are the ones that I would investigate more. I would investigate these corn tortilla chips. They've got a rank of 8,000, a $14 buy price, and they're probably three bucks a bag. So six to 14 is enough for me to kind of take a look at it. So you would scroll through here and you would be trying to find listings that already had a lot of reviews and a good rank. Right. And then you would go uh, back to Trader Joe's and try to reverse source that way, right? You would now find the chip aisle, see the prices. Is that how you would do that? Yes. And, and anything that's a possibility, I'd be adding it to that Amazon list so that I could easily grab the ASIN, punch it in if I needed to calculate it. But I already know going in, say this Trader Joe Crunchy Curls at a $14 buy price, I already know in my head that if I can get it for pretty much under five, it's going to be a bolo. It's got the rank, it's got some reviews, it's got a good price. Um, and then can I tell you a couple things that I do? Yeah. So how you over to the, the left of your screen, at least it's my left, where it says availability and you can check the box that in, says include out of stock. A lot of times I like to click this button because it will, uh, now I don't know why it pulled those as being out of, oh, it's including the out of stock. What I like to search for is the ones that are out of stock mm -hmm. um, because if they, they could be because it was a seasonal item or it could just be because people fell off the listing and, and now I can be the only seller. So sometimes I like to do that. The other thing I like to do is if you scroll up to the top of your, your search bar where you typed in chips and just kind of start over with just, you know, get to the word where it's only says trader. I'm leaving Joe's in there. Well, when you do just even Trader, it will it automatically Amazon automatically starts pulling up Trader Joe's, and it usually pulls the top things that is uh, people are searching for. Uh, Amazon um, automatically knows about what's going to come next based off what all of us type in. Look, there goes more ginger snaps. <laughs> um, and so then you know what categories are quite popular on Amazon. And then I will start kind of reverse sourcing that way. It, or it made me think of like, oh, salsa. I didn't think about looking at Trader Joe's salsa or mm -hmm. I forgot what the other ones were that were the top search results. Yep. Um, but even on my computer, when I just typed in Trader, it already pulled up Joe's and then, and then those line items. Mikey is asking what time tomorrow are you doing your BA thing? Um, I believe it was 10 o'clock. Um, let me look at my message with her. Gluten free. I would look at this one. She, uh, she lives in the, the States. So I know she and I are on the same time. 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. And that's for West Coast time. So if you're in New York or Pennsylvania, it's one for me, 10. So my, you know, I'm just, I'm just popping in what I feel cost of goods would be. And this is where maybe you'd want to get a notepad and say, okay, go in and check out the rice crackers, see what the buy price is. Your margins were six. You could just write down your margins too. My margins are $6 and 95 cents. So then that way you can easily on the shelf, see that if you can buy it for less than that. Yeah. Um, we've got these peanut butter. What are these? Those are here? in the store. I saw those there. Do you remember? I price? don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess two fifty a piece. So probably a $10 buy price. My guess, my guess. Yeah. And that's why, you know, you want to flag these so you can go in and see what. Yeah. What and they're about the size of a granola bar box. Mm-hmm. And then the other one that I pulled up was these multi-seeds. Now, these types of items are ones that I would use a box for. 100%. And then I would um, I would use the free boxes that you can get because those would definitely fit down. And then that way you're not um, lowering your 
profit on there by now spending 50 cents on a box. Do you have those handy? If not, I can grab I them. I do. I have, because I, I'm in my, I'm in my work room. So yes, I do. And where do I get these from? UPS, FedEx? I always forget. UPS. UPS. And you so have to call and that's a smaller number. box. This is how they come. So you can get them case packed. I think Let me put you up. 50 come in a case. And, and so they just come nice and flat. So they're nice because they're easy to store on your shelf. They come in two sizes. And so they're easy to, we box up stuff in them all the time. And, you know, then it's up to you if you want to tape get the little edge there. And then say like, um, this is big enough to put probably a box of granola bars in this size here. The lo longer boxes, you can put quite a few things. I use these during Q4 all the time because these are perfect for putting in like the little toys. If you bought, you know, the action figures, things like that. Um, it's great for, and then they're so light. It still ends up being first class shipping on those lightweight <laughs> items. Yep. So I'm just looking for some more more things here. I really like this this uh, two pack here. Mm -hmm. Eighteen dollars. What? Yeah, I want to say those are about three bucks a piece. Yeah, I have bought these before. That's a good one, and I I definitely would put these in the that free box. Mm -hmm. Because it's people get upset when their crackers come broken. Yes, they do. And I have sold lots of very delicate crackers on Amazon and I've boxed them in these boxes and I've never once had a complaint that, oh, my crackers arrived broken. So uh, I 10, am, 10 o'clock is 12 o'clock central, right? Yes. Just thinking mountains one hour ahead. Central's two hours ahead. Eastern is three <laughs> hours ahead. I want to make sure I double check Still Even though coffee. I'm not in California, I'm their neighbor. I, I run on Cali time. So whenever I'm announcing our times, it's always it's always the West Coast. Yeah. And I'm curious if anybody found value out of doing things like this. Um, so I know to do more videos like this for you. Um, if you like this idea of um, doing the online research with photographs just if you have any comments i'm looking at this two pack you get the cowboy caviar and the corn and chili I'm trying to see if it moves 10. Ten. Ten a month all right swamp picker i see the name swamp picker there are you from louisiana <laughs> My aunt lives there, and she was posting pictures of crawfish etouffee the other day. Oh, I don't, I'm not a big crawfish fan, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not, but I have had crawfish etouffee, and I liked it. I don't know, maybe I just, I don't get it enough. We're more in the sea up here. Yeah. Look at these. Have you ever done this tingle? Uh, yeah, that one I didn't find moved very well. Um, so I would not recommend that. This it's 21,000 in rank. I don't know. I, I think maybe there was a billion sellers on it. I don't know what it was. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of different multi-packs up here. You do this uh, type of research daily, Mikey, with photos and kind of reverse sourcing and going in. Yeah, I like that. Well, and yeah, there's just so much, so much you can go and look at and, and get, and, you know, I know a lot of people love the tactical arbitrage and the helium and, and OA lists and stuff, but you're going to find your best ones kind of doing it old school like this. Anytime I've used those others, they get on the tactical arbitrage VA list so quick and they do. And not only do they get on those lists quickly, honest to God, when you run the tactical, and I'm not, for those that use it and love it, please keep using it. I'm not here to deter anyone away from another person's business or their software by any means. It's just for me that I prefer manually because when I have used tactical arbitrage, 
I honestly spent as much time, if not more, sorting through the results that it produced mm -hmm. and, you know, going back and forth. I spent just as much time researching as I did doing it manually. And doing it manually, I could still go down the same type of rabbit holes, but I don't spend a hundred bucks a month on it anymore. And I didn't use it forever. I've used it two different times because I thought the first time, well, maybe I just didn't really know how to use it that well since so many people loved it. So I tried it again and I had a friend who had bought their their training of how to use it. And and he shared with me those lessons and eh, it. <laughs> I'm just I, I just prefer doing it this way. But I do know. I do have a, one friend in particular who uses it and he couldn't live without it. And he has like five VAs that, that work for him, you know, running through the list and, and for him, that's great. And so I, I'm not knocking it. I, you know, it's just not for me. Right. And I found that even if I did get an OA list, I was any, anytime I, you know, it said buy this, it was like, okay, I know I'm not going to buy that, but I'm going to find something off of it you know, go down that rabbit trail because the initial fine will be price tanked by the time I even get it into my building. It's going to be terrible. Yeah. Um, PM Porter says that, that they think this will be very beneficial. They just got to make time because there's so much to do. And isn't that the truth? It's like there, I, I think all of us who do, do online selling, we always have more to do than we can keep up with. It is true. But I do spend an amount of time every day researching product, whether I buy any or not, um, whether it's the first thing you do in the morning, at the end of the day. I love to, to still, you know, have things on my radar. So I generally always have 20 tabs open on my computer of, oh, I need to go back to, to this, or I need to go add this to my cart and buy it later. Um, and I think that's probably common for a lot of us. So I do try to keep my day balanced between checking emails, um, you know, keeping up with any type of Facebook posts that I need to, preparing shipments, getting shipments out, uh, ordering my replens online, you know, trying to look for a few new items. Um, I tend to divide my day into all of these tasks. Um, I used to try to do things in big chunks, like today only I'm going to, to shop. Today only I'm going to do shipments. Today only I'm going to list on eBay. Um, but I find that doing um, little segments of all of those things in a day works better for me. But I do still assign one day a week to eBay uh, in doing that, I'm still segmenting and doing all the other things. It's just that I would maybe say do Amazon shipment for, you know, four hours on a day. Well, one day a week, it gets flipped to that for the four hours I'm listing on eBay, you know, because I, I may be caught up enough with Amazon. So that's what works for me best. Yep. Mikey brings up a good point. Once you find a product on TA, go into the store, scan the one next to it. Yeah. And you'll find more products. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Robin, you're at work. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're having fun at work. I, I went down this trail right here. Let me see. I can't tell which the best thing on. is like the videos are still always available for when you when you're not at work. So I went down this trail right here. So this person made a bundle, right? They took two Trader Joe's items and whatever, a 50 cent, a dollar hair tie thing. So I went to their store. They don't really have anything too exciting, but they are trying to branch out and do branding. And I know a lot of people, we're going to try and do a lot more bundle videos next month. Tina and I are putting together some things for July just on bundles. But yeah. people ask, you know, how do you do branded packaging? You go to a box company and you get a branded package like this. This was not very difficult to create. And then you can show Amazon that you have branded packaging. You could even do this with a sticker. Get a white box, get some stickers and brand it. Amazon's not hard to, I don't want to say finagle, but they don't have too many stipulations. And all they did was they, they take different stash tees. Um, okay. And I got to go. My, my new employees here. Hold on, Tina, you finish out the video. 
Well, we're pretty much done. You know, that's pretty much was it for uh, Trader Joe's and and what to do for Trader Joe's. You could use this. I'll be right with you. Honest to God, with any store that you go to, I just tr chose Trader Joe's specifically for today to use as an example, and because we cannot scan barcodes in Trader Joe's. So um, again, you guys. Uh, Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate you. And for those interested in having a very affordable VA and a special um, offer tomorrow from um, my VA, you definitely want to join in tomorrow with me at 10 o'clock West Coast time. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you learned something or at least opened your mind to other possibilities. My favorite stores to source like this is Trader Joe's and Ikea, and that's because they skirt tactical arbitrage and everybody that's using all the software out there, and they have good brands that are easy to do replens, and, you know, the stores are in my area are are great because I can pop in, I can fill up a couple carts and then leave, usually just one cart, leave and then, you know, hit it up once or twice a month and have some reoccurring replens that do help me out financially. Yes. All right, Mark. Sorry, we're in, we're out, but the recording, the recording is still there on Facebook or on YouTube. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great Bye. day. Bye, Rhonda. Bye, Mikey. Bye.